We're Ulla and Josh, and in December 2022, we sold our house by the sea in Hastings to go in search of a new adventure. Join us as we adjust to living in our new tiny home. There's loads of water in the bilges. That doesn't look too good. A lot of water in our boat. Why are we discovering this? No. I'm really worried about our boat. Hoping you guys can hear me all right down there. I just really wanted to show you, we've sucked it all out, we've tried to dry it out as much as possible and it doesn't really seem to be coming back now. Obviously we're going to dry it out, obviously we're going to make sure that you know we can get as much moisture out as possible so things don't rust. Talking about the water that keeps coming into here, is that normal we need to get this looked at? Because I'm worried about this base plate. I'm taking up some ballast from the floor so I can uh, inspect a bit further, further down here to see how to what extent the water is and how much the rust is as well. So we've checked the engine bay, we checked the engine bay when we got home and that was fine. So it's obviously fine. water that's coming in from somewhere, either the our water system's leaking or there's water coming in from the canal somewhere under the boat. No, I think if it's a canal then it would have that we'd have had troubles, babe. I, I think it's a, a burst pipe or even an old burst pipe where there's water that's been sat for a long time, you know. But that was, old... it was dry a, a, a week, not dry, but like it, yeah. it's accumulated a lot over the past month or so. What we're going to do now is just basically just pack it with kitchen roll, trying to absorb as much of it as, as we can and get on top of it. Uh, I've taken some videos and a picture and I'm just going to put it out there to the Facebook community, the boaters community really. and see what comes up because literally we have no gauge we don't know if that's normal if is it not obviously we're new to this and currently it feels like it's not good news um, and that's quite worrying so let's try and get some research done find out some answers I really hope that there's nothing seriously wrong with our boat like really serious because that was a lot of water and we don't know where it's coming from that's really quite scary for me that's scary i know but look i guess we're committed to this boat now we're in this project we're going to see it through if it is puddle welding if it is the base plate that needs sorting out if not it's ripping up the the wall lovely walnut floor <laughs> <laughs> oh floor i really don't want to have to lift this up so tonight we'll call it a, we'll call it a night for now oh yeah 100 percent. can't be bothered anymore this is full on and i think we're on top of it so we can relax scrub it. this fake tan off me <laughs> it'll be all right oh. i'm really worried about our boat well i just said she's finally falling in love with the boat because there has been some teething problems like the height of our boat little things like that but she finally fell in love with it and managed to put those to bed and this boat has so many beautiful things about it but there were a few little things that were just getting to me and i came back today and was just absolutely thrilled to be here and it's such a special space and it feels so good the energy is perfect mm. in here and we love the layout the light it's just it's lovely and now we've it is quite unique you know we, we, we have a cottagey vibe because the ceiling is a little bit lower it That's has so many incredible qualities but now that it i mean what if we have to get a different boat because don't this one can't now. it's sinking or something i don't know take it step by step all right come here i'm thinking too far into the future don't worry have a deep breath with me Okay, I'll sort it.
Good morning, gang. What a perfect day it is to set up our sofa finally in this tiny confined space and transform our living room. See you in a bit. It's pretty freaking simple. Instructions. Who needs them? That's that. Simple. It's too easy. What's going to happen? Wow! Feels a bit... Flimsy. flimsy. <laughs> it does feel flimsy. Oh dear. Do you follow the instructions? It'd be alright. Do you hear that? What is that? What the hell is that? Sounds like there's water coming in. What is that? Has it overflowed? It's overflowed! Is that Trey? Oh, fantastic. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I'll keep it there, look at that. That Trey's overflowed. Look, it's dripping. I think that's why it's bloody freaking leaked everywhere. So we're not entirely sure where we left it the other day when we came back and we were obviously quite stressed and we discovered this leak and we weren't entirely sure what or, was going on. Or to the extent of it either. And um, I think we were feeling very disheartened, sad, worried and everything all at the same time. But we've had a few days to sort of, you know, think about it and... Um, Work on the problem, see the problem. This boat is, was built in the 1986. So it is an old boat. So a boat of that age is probably bound to have a few issues here and there. It's going to have its problems. And I guess ultimately, whatever the problem is... We'll sort it. We'll have to sort it. We and, love our uh, boat. <laughs> we do, we love it. This is part of it. This is boat life. Hey, Joshy. You having fun? Mm. Bit awkward there, hey? I found two leaks, though. Oh, yeah. Did you say you found couple of leaks and is it quite wet down there already we've got a nappy down there at the moment to try and like absorb it mm. better and it's already dripping quite a bit it's not a dirty nappy i mean it is but not not a, dirty dirty not dirty dirty so we've got our whole water setup is here there's our water filters then we've got storage all on this side and then behind that wall there is our toilet so every time we want to get the cassette out we have to take the whole bed out which is really annoying which is another motivation for getting a composting toilet eventually. Anyway. We've both emptied this expansion drip tray mm. out a few times now. It does seem to fill quite quickly. Yeah, okay, so we think we've located it. We'll continue to monitor it over the next few days whilst we're continuing to suck out the water down the back of the boat. I don't know how we're going to fix it. A bit of plumber's tape. Any plumbers out there? Give us some recommendations because we'll happily take them. Every joint there's a drip, there's two more drips. Well there you go, that's promising. That means that our boat isn't getting water hopefully in from the canal. There's no random burst piping system that we have to hunt down. Okay. So, so grateful actually. Well, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. That this is actually This there. is the issue. Baby, you gotta have faith, faith, faith. You gotta have faith, faith, faith. <laughs> <sighs> Good morning guys, it's uh, more of a chill day today, we've got jobs on like every other day, but we're going to start the day cleaning up the kitchen, starting the engines so we can charge the batteries, get some more electricity back in this boat because it doesn't hold very for very long. So we have to pretty much start the engine every day. So clean the kitchen and get on to the rest of the jobs. How's your banoffee pie breakfast? It's delicious. Real, there's none left. <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> That's a good sign. I like to put banana, peanut butter, a little bit of honey into my porridge. Perfect, banoffee pie breakfast. Brecky done, kitchen cleaned, batteries charging, next up, toilets. So 
big. <laughs> Bloody hell, are you getting a workout today, girl? We have a mountain of washing to get through. We originally thought we would go to a laundromat, but then we thought, why not give our washing machine that came with the boat a try? We don't know how great our spin cycle is, so yeah, bear with us, because this is it's going to be interesting. Sorry, I actually just want to pop in there and say a big thank you to the, the Narrowboat Facebook community. I, I did actually put the washing machine up for sale to make more space and they were like you're crazy Don't you need to it. keep it because of the prices and we had no idea about the we prices. We didn't realize it was this expensive um, we've been doing washing thankfully at family members houses when we've gone to visit them recently but now we don't have that luxury anymore we've got to actually get this going so this yeah. is our life isn't it we need to be completely self-sufficient. Here we go ducks, wags, what the hell is this? We've been together for almost four years and I have never seen this. What is yeah. this? I've never seen you wear that. In the military, there's a really common thing that everyone does sometimes. It's called shit shirt night. A big group of guys wears a shit shirt, goes out in town and they all just look like plonkers. <laughs> we are about to tackle that mountain of washing. Right, I'm gonna turn the inverter on. For those that don't know what an inverter is, I know some of my friends won't know that. It's basically to turn your main three pin plugs that you get at home, it allows power to come to them. I'm not gonna go into the technical side of it, but it basically <laughs> converts a three pin plug into a 12 volt power supply. No, it's the other way around. Turn the inverter on to be able to power our three pin plug items. Via the 12 volt battery. System, yes. That's it. So we are about to find out how juicy our washing machine is on power. Our battery setup is rubbish, as you guys know. We're changing that very soon. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, we're gonna find out how, how much it's gonna to take to be able to do a wash load. Woo! Okay, now, daily, quick, should we do a quick? Super quick, otherwise we'll destroy our batteries. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working. So we stepped away for a second to try and erect a washing line of some kind and it's turned off. What's happened? It's turned off. I don't know. The battery's all right. Maybe it couldn't handle the dark wash? Oh, I know, we've probably uh, blown a fuse then. That's a right pain in the ass. Because now we've got a washing machine full of water and wet unwashed clothes that we need to deal with. We're going to try and start the generator and then we need to buy some more fuses for the washing machine. So this whole scenario of trying to sort out the washing and our lives a little bit more is maybe going to have to wait. We've got it. Keep smiling buddy, I know it's hard. You're right. Yeah, for me, the hard, hardest thing about boat life for me is your expectations, you know, you're always having a job list and it's always being added to every hour and uh, you know, you get up motivated to start smashing some of these jobs out and there's always something that gets in your way. It's always something that slows you down and I guess, you know, a lesson in that is... It's okay to, to take your time and you need to be and okay to with slowing down. Yeah, you need to re reduce the amount of expectation that you place on yourself to need to get a certain amount of things done in a day when actually when you're stripping things back and trying to live a little bit more off grid, things take longer and that's okay. I know it's our choice to obviously let things affect us and how we deal with it. It doesn't feel enjoyable at the minute when Everything feels like it's up against you. Yeah, it's yeah. just so full on. Every single day tests your resilience, your motivation, your get up and go. Cause you know, if you have a bad day, you wake up in the morning and you go, ah, oh, Jesus. But we can't do that. It's okay for things to be hard. It's about you being okay with them being hard and then feeling a massive sense of achievement when you finally get through it. Yeah, that's yeah? true. It is true, but I just wanted to share that with you guys actually because that I think that is my biggest challenge about boat life at the moment is the inability to achieve jobs as efficiently as I'd like. At the pace that you're used to. At the pace that I'm used to, yeah. So, and, and knowing that the job list just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> but anyway. Let's keep going. We've got each other, so we'll the get it done. The sun is shining, so if we ever did get to wash our clothes, we it's might. It's a glorious be. day, yeah. Josh has lo managed to locate the spark plugs which we had under there, which was obviously covered in stuff, so... The kitchen stayed clean for about 10 minutes. Yeah, so got some spark plugs, so let's keep going. Yeah, I think I found a, a good spark plug too. So that's an old spark plug. Yeah, well I was just asking what the... Uh, they look like. They look like that's an old spark plug, obviously. Okay. I'm hoping 
in this packet is a brand new one. Oh, go on baby. Don't get me wrong guys, I'm no mechanic, but trial and error. I think with mechanical things, it's just fault finding. You know what's going on, you try each different thing, make sure it's doing what it's meant to do. That's as far as I go. Does it look pretty sharp? It's hard to tell, it does look a bit coked up. But, um, well, can't hurt to change it. One of the old things I used to do when I was a kid was get a lighter and burn off the excess fuel. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, if that's if you flooded an engine. So that is a tip, but I think this one is just too coked up. So we'll put a new one in and just to play it safe. He's got his new spark plug in there. Is, is it time to have a go? <laughs> Testing the strength of my optimism. <laughs> if you guys have ever had a high on die, H HX149. Yeah, Tell me your reviews because so far it's been crap for me. <laughs> and Ken has this tiny little one that you can move around so easy like a and handbag. And it starts every time. It starts every time. And this. it's so light as well. It's so heavy. Come on optimism, come on great day. <laughs> we want clean clothes. <laughs> oh dear. I'm cleaning out the carburetor. I've been pulling and pulling for ages with a new spark plug, fresh oil, fresh fuel it's not working so I spoke to a friend and he said there might be some crap in your carburetor it's only gone and started now we need to locate some fuses so we can change the fuse of the washing machine and then plug it in and see if we can get a wash load done before the sun goes down Well, that's a promising sign. It is on. Oh, is it working? Oh, it's it's on. What? It's what? It's it's reset itself and it's and it's making noise. It's working. <laughs> we don't have to drain out the washing machine and take sodden clothes to be washed somewhere else. Honestly, I don't know where to start. We learned that we couldn't use our <laughs> washing machine plugged into the mains on our boat. So then we started up the generator. The generator didn't start. So then we changed the spark plug, got fresh fuel, fresh oil, still didn't start. Clear out the carburetor, because there might be some rubbish in the carburetor. Cleared that out. It started, as you saw. Optimism came back, didn't it? Five minutes later, what happened? We plugged it in and the uh, washing machine didn't work. Yeah, that's it, the generator just packed in. We had to unload the, the washing machine, take out all the wet washing, drive all the way to the laundry mat and devices, and now do the four loads of washing that we had planned for today within the space of an hour and a half. No other jobs done today, really. Thank you all so much for joining us on our narrowboat adventures this week. We are so happy to have you with us. And a huge thank you also to everyone who bought us a coffee. We are so grateful for your support. Next week on our narrowboat, we finally try our hand at operating some locks. We get reunited with our pal Ken and our favourite furry friend. We're left without a toilet. Can't use the toilet anymore. And we start to see the first signs of spring. See you, see you next, next Sunday. Sunday.